Today, we're going to discuss about reproduction in animals. In class 7, you have studied about reproduction in plants. Now in this class, in this chapter, we're going to study about reproduction in animals. We already learned about the importance of this process reproduction. Living organisms, they carry out various processes, life processes like nutrition, respiration, excretion. Along with these essential life processes, living organisms, they also possess, carry out one more important life process called reproduction. Reproduction makes the organisms to produce the young ones of their own kind. Every organism is capable of producing the young ones of its own kind. Of its own kind, a cat produces a cat. A cat cannot produce a dog. A dog produces a baby dog. So animals, they have the ability to produce the ones of their own kind. So that, that is the reproduction in animals. What are the various methods? What are the various modes of reproduction that we see in animals? That we will discuss in this chapter. But first of all, we are discussing the importance of reproduction. So why reproduction is important for an organism? Every organism, it wants to continue its race for the perpetuation of the race. For the perpetuation of its race of every organism, it wants to reproduce the ones of its own kind. So by this, on this planet, we see so many organisms existing, humans are existing, the lifespan, the lifetime of a human being is maximum 100 years. If the human is not able to reproduce after 100 years, no human beings, the lifetime of a dog is 20 years. So the dog is not, the dogs are not reproducing, after 20 years you will not find any dogs. They become totally extinct. If reproduction is not there, that particular organism will extinct. Nowadays, so many species of wild animals are endangered. We might be, uh, we might have studying this in newspapers and TV news channels. They are telling certain species of bird is endangered. Certain animal is endangered. Tigers are endangered and endangered in the sense they are becoming less in number. After a few days, they will be totally disappeared from this planet. Why? What is the reason? Because those animals or those birds, they are not having proper facilities to feed and to reproduce. Their number is very less. So even though they reproduce, protection is less. The forest is undergoing for deforestation and other activities. If they reproduce also, the young ones, they have very less chances to survive. Their habitats are destroyed. So, the animals are becoming extinct. So, reproduction is one of the life processes which makes the organisms to continue their race. The particular species is continued on the planet until the reproduction is plain and peaceful. If the reproduction is going on, the organisms produce the ones of their own kind. So, that is the importance of this reproduction. So modes of reproduction, just like in plants, there are two different modes of reproduction observed in animals. Sexual mode of reproduction, a sexual mode of reproduction. Generally, in case of plants, we find so many examples for a sexual reproduction. But whereas in animals, it is limited. Most of the animals, they take part in sexual mode of reproduction. Only in few cases, we find the asexual mode of reproduction in animals. But majority of animals, they reproduce by this sexual mode. So we know the basic difference between the asexual and sexual mode. What is sexual reproduction? Sexual reproduction means the reproduction in which there is a fusion of two gametes. So sexual reproduction me means <clears throat> sexual reproduction means fusion 
of male plus female gametes. Fusion, the joining of male and female gametes, they join together to form a zygote. This zygote, it develops into a young one, baby. So this is the sexual reproduction. So you can say that, you can define that what is, if somebody asks you what is sexual reproduction, the reproduction in which a male gamete fuses with a female gamete to form a zygote, it is called a sexual reproduction. Or the reproduction in which the fusion of male and female gametes takes place is called sexual reproduction. So here, for this sexual reproduction, for the formation of this zygote, what are required? What are required? Gametes are required. Gametes are nothing but reproductive cells or they are also called as sex cells. Sex cells or reproductive cells. How many types of gametes are required? Two types of gametes are required. Male gamete, female gamete. Male gametes are contributed by male organism. Female gametes are contributed by female organism. So these two gametes must be fused together to form this zygote. So for this sexual reproduction in animals, two gametes are required. Male gamete, female gamete. Male gametes are produced in the body of males. Female gametes are produced in the body of females. So to produce these gametes, male and female organisms, they have special organs. Males have male reproductive organs which produce the male gamete. Females have female reproductive organs to produce the female gametes. Now, let us see the description, the diagrams of male and female reproductive systems, various parts and how the gametes are produced in them. So the gametes, the reproductive cells are produced by the organisms, male gametes are produced by male organism, female gametes are produced by female organism. So organisms, they have special organs to produce the gametes. If you see in case of male, this is the human male reproductive system. This consists of different parts. The male reproductive system of human consists of a pair of testes. One, two, a pair of testes, sperm duct and penis. So the testes are the organs in which the reproductive cells are produced and they are passed to the sperm duct and finally they are, they are ejected through the penis. So testes is the organs in which the male gametes are produced. The male gametes are also called as sperm cells. They are produced in a large quantity. So millions of sperm cells are produced at a time and here we can see the structure of sperm cell. This is the total thing, the total unit is a single cell. This is a single cell. This kind of cells millions are produced. So it consists of a head, middle piece and a tail. The tail helps the sperm to move. Sperm cells, they have mobility. With the feature of mobility, the sperm cells, they reach the egg cell. So they need to travel a lot. The sperm cells, they need to travel a lot in the female reproductive system to finally reach the egg cell. So for the movement, for the mobility, the tail of the sperm cell helps. So this is about the male reproductive system. So the male reproductive system, it consists of a pair of testes, which produce male reproductive cells or male gametes. So the testes are connected to sperm ducts through which the sperm is passed and finally ejected through penis. So now let us look at the female reproductive system. 
फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम ऑफ ह्यूमन्स हियर इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ डिफरेंट पार्ट्स लाइक ओवरीज ए पेर ऑफ ओवरीज लेफ्ट ओवर इज राइट ओवर ए पेर ऑफ ओवरीज ओवरीज दे प्रोड्यूस ओवा ओवा और एग्स ova or x singular is ovum so these egg cells are female gametes so the female gametes are called as ova female gametes are called as ova male gametes are called as sperm cells so where are these ova produced they are the ova are produced in the ovaries see in male reproductive system the test is it can produce the sperm cells in large number millions of sperm cells are released at a time and the sperm cells are very small in size but whereas the ovaries they produce only one ova per month in one month in a day cycle of 28 days the ovary it produces one ova and these ovaries they produce the ova alternately say for example one month this one produces one ova in the next month the other one produces right so monthly only one ova is produced even though there are two ovaries only one ova one egg cell is produced in a period of 28 days or one month so here whatever the ova or the female gamete that is produced released from the ovary it passes through the tube this tube is called as fallopian tube or tubule fallopian tubule like this it passes so what is this <clears throat> center part of this female reproductive system called as uterus uterus is the bag like structure in which the baby develops so here the female gamete or the egg cell when it is passing through the fallopian tubule if by chance if it fuses with the sperm cell then it becomes to zygote and this zygote comes down here and fixes here we will see that how the fertilization takes place in the next part in the next session but here let us see the fallopian tubule the fallopian tubule is the tube which connects the ovary to the uterus uterus is a elastic bag like organ which has got all amenities all facilities for the complete development of the baby so that is the female reproductive system female reproductive system has got the female reproductive organs those are the ovaries a pair of ovaries they produce ova when you compare the size of ova with the sperm cell which one is bigger ova is bigger the ovum is bigger compared to the size of the sperm cells so we have seen the gametes and the organs which are producing the gametes in male and female now let us see the fertilization how the fusion of gametes takes place and what happens after the fusion of gametes so now let us see the fertilization what is fertilization the fusion of male gamete plus female gamete leads to formation of zygote and we call this process as fertilization in many of the animals many of the animals the fertilization takes place inside the female body when the fertilization takes place inside the body we call that fertilization as internal fertilization internal that means inside the body inside the body of which organism male or female organism female organism so you consider the male organism as a father and the female organism as a mother the fertilization takes place in the body of the mother so the female gametes where are the female gametes the female gametes are in the female body the female body consists of female reproductive system this is the female reproductive system and in the female reproductive system this part is the ovary and here is the ova the ovary releases a ova and the ova it passes it travels in the fallopian tubule here is the female gamete here what should happen the fusion should takes place the fusion of male and female gamete 
But where is the female gamete? It is in the fallopian tubule. The fallopian tubule is a part of female reproductive system. The female reproductive system is in the female body. By chance, if the sperm cells enter the female reproductive system, if the sperm cells enter the female reproductive system through these vagina and these sperm cells, if they could fuse with the egg cell, here number of sperm cells, they reach this place. What is this place? Fallopian tubule. But out of these sperm cells, only one sperm cell can penetrate the egg cell like this. So number of sperm cells, they try to penetrate the ovum. But only one sperm cell, it penetrates the ovum and it fuses with the egg cell. So this is a place where fertilization takes place. The male reproductive cell or the sperm cell fuses with egg cell. See here, this is the egg cell. And this is the sperm cell. Here we can see that the two sperm cells are trying to penetrate. Here one sperm cell it penetrated. Once the fusion takes place, the egg does not allow any other sperm cells to get in. Now here we can see the nucleus of this sperm cell, the nucleus of this sperm cell and nucleus of the egg cell, they join together to form a combined nucleus. So when the combined nucleus is formed, we call this as a zygote. Fusion taken place. After the fusion, you call it as a zygote. Where is this zygote here? The zygote is formed. So by the time when the egg released by the ovary, if by that time, if any sperm cells are introduced into the female reproductive system by any of the male, if the sperm cells enter into the female reproductive system, the sperm cells, they fuse with the female gamete. The male gamete fuses with the female gamete and there the fertilization takes place. So once the fertilization takes place, what is formed here? Zygote. The zygote, it comes down, it travels down and it fixes to the wall of the uterus, either this side or this side. This is the wall of the uterus. Here the zygote it fixes. So there the zygote, zygote is a single celled one, but it slowly develops into the entire baby, complete baby. The development, it takes place in the uterus. So this is called as fertilization. So how this fertilization takes place? Where this fertilization takes place? This takes place inside the body of the female, in cows, in hens, in dogs, in humans. The fertilization takes place inside the female body. The male reproductive cells are introduced into the female body and in the female body the male cells fuse with female cells and the formation of zygote and reproduction that uh, fertilization takes place. This is called as internal fertilization. But in animals, in certain animals, fertilization takes place outside their bodies, not inside the body. Let us see that example how the fertilization takes place outside the body and what is it called so. So we have seen the internal fertilization in animals like uh, humans, cows, dogs, hens. In all those cases, the fertilization takes place inside the body of female. Now we see some other kind of fertilization which takes place outside the body of organism. In certain aquatic organisms like fishes, starfishes and in frogs, the fertilization takes place outside their bodies. Let us see how. During the rainy season, during a rainy season, the frogs and toads, the frogs and toads, they move to the ponds because that is the, their breeding season. Even fish in monsoon, they breed. Ponds and slow flowing streams because if it is heavy floating, the eggs will get washed off away. So here, first the female frog, the female frog, it lay the eggs. It lay the eggs like this into the water directly. Immediately the male frog, male frog, it, it lays the sperm, it ejects the sperm into the water. 
So in the water, the sperm cells, they have tails, they float, they swim. The sperm cells, they swim and they find the egg cells and they fuse. But here you see here, the environment plays a very important role. It is all like uh, chance, fertilization by chance. Many of the eggs may be missing the sperm cells. Many of the sperm cells may not be able to fertilize it. Because it is all happening in an open environment. Because some other predator may come and eat all the eggs. Some other fish may come and eat all the eggs. Because it is happening in the open, external, outside the bodies. That is the reason why these frogs and fishes, they lay their eggs in large number. You see humans, internal fertilization, only one egg in one month. Here it is secured because it is released inside the body. There is no threat to that. But whereas in case of animals like frogs and fishes, plenty of eggs are released at a time. Why plenty of eggs are released? Because many of them may not survive. Some of them may get washed away by the water currents. Some of them uh, may be eaten by some other predator animal, some other fish. So only a few could survive. Of course, many of the eggs, even though they are fertilized by the sperm, even though they are fertilized, there is no guarantee for the fertilized eggs till they are developed into young ones. They may be eaten by some other animals. There is no proper protection. That is the reason they are produced in large number. So because of the large number, of course, 70 to 80 percent of them are died because of different situations. At least a 20 percent could survive. So this is the external fertilization which is observed in frogs and toads and fishes and in starfish. In all these cases, the female organism lay the eggs into the water. So those eggs are not like the eggs of hens. The hen bird eggs are shelled. They have a shell. But these eggs do not have any shell. They have a jelly-like material. So why they have jelly-like material? Sometimes these eggs may get washed away by the water current. So to avoid that with the jelly-like material, they stick to some of the leaves or twigs or water plants. If there is anything there in the water bodies, they stick. Even after fertilization, they stick to some of the uh, objects that they, they develop. So that's why they are covered by jelly-like material. So this kind of external fertilization is observed in frogs, fishes and starfish in aquatic animals. Many of the aquatic animals we find this kind of external fertilization. The fertilization which takes place outside the body. The fertilization neither takes place in the body of male or female. It is outside. Whereas internal fertilization it takes place inside the body of the female. Now let us see the development of embryo. So again, come back to that internal fertilization. We discussed about internal fertilization, external fertilization. So in the internal fertilization, the fertilization takes place inside the body of female organism. And uh, we have seen that human female reproductive system. So this is the human female reproductive system. Now let us see how the development of embryo takes place in case of humans. So this ovary releases the ova. It releases the ova. Again, the ova is collected by the fallopian tubule. So the ova is the female gamete. The female gamete, it has to be fused with male gamete. So if any male gametes enter the female system, then it fuses. The sperm cell fuses with this egg cell and zygote is formed. So this is the zygote. The zygote means a single cell with both the nucleus mixed together. M nucleus of male gamete and female, female gamete. So both the nuclei, they join together, they form the zygote. It is a single cell. Now, this zygote, it develops into two. Now, this two become four, four. So, likewise, number of cells. And finally, it becomes a ball of cells. Ball of cells. That means gradual cell divisions takes place. One cell becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes two, eight. Likewise, it becomes a ball of cells. So many cells. So what happens to this ball of cell? What is this called as? So this is called as embryo. So this embryo, the number of cells are increased here and this embryo, it gets implanted in the uterus. In the wall of the uterus, the embryo gets implanted. Here is the embryo. 
it get implanted in the wall of the uterus the wall of the uterus it is just like a cushion supplied with so many blood vessels it supplies oxygen food material everything to this embryo so this embryo it develops into fetus means the embryo it divides con constantly the again and again and again and again so the cells of the embryo they differentiate some cells of embryo become into hands some cells of embryo changes to head some cells change to changes to legs some cells changes to body likewise the cells present in the embryo they differentiate into different parts head hands legs likewise so a fetus is formed fetus means fetus is the stage at which we can identify all the body parts at the stage of fetus all the body parts are identified yes these are the hands these are the legs this is the head earlier how it was only one cell the one cell divided to two to four likewise a ball of cells now this ball of cells is becoming into a baby some cells they change to head some cells they change to hand some to legs likewise the cells are differentiated into different 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 body parts so all the body parts slowly they start developing inside the uterus so when the fetus fetus means in the stage of having all the body parts all the body parts are visible so all these body parts when they are completely developed the fetus it turns to a baby and takes birth so then the birth of the baby have happens when when the fetus is completely developed in the uterus uterus of the female reproductive system so this is how the development of embryo takes place in higher animals in internal fertilization this is the example of humans in in case of humans how this takes place the same happens with the other mammals like cows dogs and cats and all right now let us see how the development of embryo takes place in uh, animals like uh, birds hen they lay the egg hen do not develop the baby inside its body the development of the baby takes place outside the body hen just lay the egg the hens they lay the eggs but whereas you see in humans the baby is completely developed inside the body when the baby is totally developed then the birth takes place the baby is coming into the world after complete development but in case of hens they are laying eggs egg is not at all developed one if you break the egg you can't see any chicken in that if you break the egg you see only egg white and egg yellow that's all it is a cell it is not developed where the development takes place outside the hen lays the eggs if the egg is incubated for 20 days or if the egg is incubated in an incubator at certain temperature then the egg turns into a chick now let us see how it happens see in case of uh, animals like hens when the zygote is formed when the zygote is formed so around the zygote so many layers are formed so these layers they form the hard shell called as egg shell so the shell is protective in nature now hen lay the egg so this egg becomes chick when the hen sits on it when the hen it sits on the egg when it provides heat when it incubates then the egg it breaks and the chick comes out so usually they do it for some 20 days of time they incubate the eggs to make them into chicks but artificial incubators are used these days to make the chicks to get the chicks out of the eggs so naturally the animal it provides the warmth to the egg so the development of the embryo takes place outside the body certain animals they lay their eggs in the rocks they do not provide any heat just simply they lay the eggs and they go away certain reptiles like snakes some tortoise alligators they lay their eggs and they go away they do not incubate then how these eggs are incubated they lay their eggs on the rocks during day time the rocks become very hot due to sun and that heat is supplied to the eggs so from that heat that means the incubation is done by the environment in the same way 
uh, in certain uh, water animals they get the temperature from something some some other place but some eggs they need temperature some do not but in cases certain cases certain animals they incubate they sit on the eggs and they hatch the eggs in some cases by the environmental temperatures by the environmental factors the eggs are incubated and the young ones come out of the eggs so in this way the birth of the animal takes place the differences we found there in between internal and external fertilization and development of the embryo inside the body and outside the body so now here we see one more classification of animals depending upon the mode of uh, reproduction how they give birth to the young ones the animals that lay eggs are called as oviparous hens that means all the birds and the reptiles fishes so these are all oviparous animals that means they lay their eggs they do not give birth to the young ones viviparous animals means they give birth to the young ones completely developed young ones dogs cats rats humans elephants tigers all these are animals all the mammals they give birth to the young ones mammals they feed the young ones with their own milk so that is, these are the characteristic features of mammals which we have studied in our lower classes so the viviparous animals they give birth to the young ones oviparous animals they lay eggs so when we are talking about the reproduction the birth of young ones from the parents here we need to discuss one more point that is young ones to adults see the organisms which take birth they become into adults small babies become into big animals but here in case of animals we find certain differences in certain cases if you see a human baby human baby how the baby is when by the time the baby is born after growing adult big also the baby will be the same the baby will possess the same body part same hand same number of legs same number of hands same number of fingers so you don't find any drastic change in the body of humans all mammals other animals you see cats or dogs so how the cat was born by the time how many fingers and toes it has got after becoming into an adult it will be like that its face and body shape it doesn't change its shape we will not find any drastic changes but whereas in some cases we will see some drastic changes in their lifetime so their in their lifetime they change their form different completely entirely different from one stage to another stage so this drastic change is called as metamorphosis metamorphosis so where do we observe this metamorphosis here we are uh, we have uh, we are given two examples in our textbook one is butterfly so the butterfly it lays the eggs so the beginning stage is egg the egg it becomes larva or caterpillar caterpillar or larva so this larva it feed on the leaves it eat lot of food and changes to pupa pupa stage see the difference egg caterpillar pupa it undergoes a continuous sleep right this pupa it becomes a beautiful moth or a butterfly so now we can see the drastic change see the form of its body compare the form of its body from caterpillar to butterfly it's entirely different but it is all a single lifetime in a single lifetime at different stages it appears in different form 
it undergoes a drastic change at each and every stage. We call that drastic change as metamorphosis, which is not observed in humans. We don't show any drastic changes at different stages of our life. Of course, there will be some changes. Our height may be increased, our weight may be increased, we may become thin or we may become fat. So this kind of simple changes, not drastic changes. We totally cannot uh, change like any other different forms. But here it is entirely different. You see the caterpillar and you see the butterfly. How much difference you find it here. So this is metamorphosis. So I told you two examples are given. The first example is this. But what is the second one? Let's see. Now let us see the second example for this metamorphosis. Again here I am drawing eggs. So eggs of what? These are the eggs of a frog eggs of a frog, they develop into early tadpole. See the early tadpole, it resembles a fish. So that when the fish larva or when the fish, young fish and this tadpole are mixed together, it is very difficult to identify which is frog and which is fish. So its form is exactly like a fish. It does not show any hands or legs. It will be swimming just like a fish in the stage of early tadpole. Now see the late tadpole. In late tadpole, the front part looks like a frog. It has got front limbs, but backside you can see a tail. This is late tadpole. And finally, it becomes a frog. Frog. So we can see the variation. So there is a drastic change in its shape. So, this kind of drastic changes at different stages of its life is called as metamorphosis. And even you see, not in the form here, when it is like a tadpole, it just behaves like a fish and it swim, it uh, has got gills. It breathes through gills. But when it changes to a frog, it breathes through its air sacs and moist skin and buccal cavity. There are different, different means of respiration, but it doesn't possess any gills here. No gills here. But here when it is in the form of tadpole, it has got gills. So that is the difference we observe. So certain animals, when they grow from their birth stage to adult form, in the meantime, at different, different stages, they change their form. They show drastic changes that is called metamorphosis. It is observed in animal, it is observed in butterflies and other moths. It is observed in frogs and all. Whereas in other animals, mammals, humans, so they are just alike from the stage of birth to the adult form. Now let us see the sexual mode of reproduction in animals. We have seen the sexual reproduction, different modes, different methods. Now asexual reproduction. Primarily we observe two things, two different types of asexual reproduction. One is binary fission, the other one is budding. Here binary fission is observed in amoeba. Amoeba is a protozoan. Of course, it is not exactly considered as an animal if you go for five kingdom classification. But till now you know that two kingdom classification plants and animals. So according to that these protozoans, this amoeba we consider it under animal here. So if you see this amoeba, it undergoes division. One amoeba, it divides into two daughter cells. So no more parent exists. One parent becomes two daughter cells. This is the parent. First what happens is the nucleus divides into two. Once the nucleus is divided into two, now this amoeba, it starts dividing into two. Two nuclei are formed, the two nuclei are 
spread like that and now two daughter cells are formed like this so this is binary fission here there is no fusion of gametes that's why we are calling it as asexual reproduction because no gametes here one parent cell divided into two by simple division so these daughter cells they grow into adult again they divide in such a way so this kind of reproduction is called as asexual reproduction as one cell is splitting into two we are calling it as binary fission if one cell is splitting into many you call it as multiple fission but here only one cell is splitting into two daughter cells two binary bi means two so this is called as binary fission now let us see the budding budding is another method of asexual reproduction in which the organism reproduces without the fusion of male and female gamete here the example is hydra hydra is an animal which is having a vase shape and it will be having fingers on its top like this this hydra it reproduces by producing a bud the hydra produces a small bulge on its body first it produces a bulge on its body later this bulge it becomes into a bud bud small bud now the hydra is having a bud bud is still attached to the hydra later this bud it get detached from the parent and leaves as an individual hydra so in this way in the method of budding the hydra reproduces this is also a sexual reproduction so here in animals in a sexual reproduction in animals we see two examples we have seen two two examples one is binary fission example is amoeba the other one is budding in hydra so in this lesson we have learned so many things about reproduction in animals how animals are reproducing different modes of reproduction sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction under the sexual reproduction what are we learned what are gametes and we learned what is a zygote we learned what is fertilization we learned what is internal fertilization we learned what is external fertilization in examples and how these uh, zygote which is formed by fertilization how the zygote is becoming into the babies and different modes different modes of fertilizations and finally the asexual reproduction and in the asexual reproduction binary fission and budding if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus